Would somebody click the light off for me so we can see that? Bill just wants everybody to go to sleep while he does Yeah, that. yeah, I tried to wake you up. I'm obviously not a comic. Um, folks, listen, you are responsible for your biosecurity plan. And a biosecurity plan is nothing more than a shield. You can decide how big a shield you want. You're going to hear some things today. Not every farm has as much risk to mitigate or minimize as others. For example, if you're next to a, a shooting preserve and they're letting you know ducks and geese loose and they're working their way on your farm, you better do some things above and beyond some of these absolutes that we're going to talk about today. If you're next to a body of water, if you have resident geese, like Dr. Shapiro just showed, there are things you should be doing on your farm. So this is not a cookie cutter type of situation. Ooh. Okay. Uh, the clicker, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. All right. All right, so there are basically three components. Um, you know, a lot of times you hear these terms, conceptual biosecurity, structural biosecurity, and operational biosecurity. Well, conceptually, we're really in trouble. We've got a concentrated, and Dr. Ritter's going to show, we, we are a concentrated industry here. We have feed mills, we have hatcheries, we have things on top of one another. And is that the ideal situation? Absolutely not. But there are some things structurally we can do to protect ourselves. Things like planting vegetative buffers, things like managing a farm gate. If, you're, if your chicken house is right along a, a major traveled road, you should consider locking doors. Is that real practical for everybody? No. As a grower, I know it's not. But if you're right next to a heavily traveled road and it would be easy enough for people to come in, you should consider doing that. So we're going to talk about that. The, uh, the production site, certainly the control of people. Uh, I mean, we know without a doubt that this right here is probably the number one vector once we get it in our system. That's the number one way that we move it around, right there on the, on the bottom of our shoes. All right, and then we've got equipment and vehicles. So we're going to talk to you today about absolutes versus recommended. All right, so what are these absolutes? Basically, if you're not doing these things, for all intent and purposes, you don't have a biosecurity plan. The first one is no backyard poultry. We know that association with backyard poultry it has been proven time and time again that those animals typically interact. There's good ways of maintaining them, but more than, more than not, a lot of this backyard poultry mixes with wildlife. There's multiple species. There's bringing chickens in, bringing chickens out, going to shows with some of these birds. As a commercial grower, this is a no-no. So, I, and there's other issues we know, for example, been a lot of progress made up in New York and New Jersey dealing with live bird auctions, but that's a no-no. You don't want any association with that. I thought this was funny. I actually found this on the website where somebody was bringing their parakeet, you know, it was a backpack to bring their parakeet around. But you, but you don't want to be doing that. You want to avoid pet stores because there's markets, um, you know, for, for a lot of these high dollar birds. This is actually a shot in Dorchester County. It's actually, you can see my farm in the background. But here's a neighbor and half mile away. Now, admittedly, that grower is doing it right. They've got those birds contained. Um, they can't associate, but my, my, our next door neighbor moves these things all over their yard. So again, I, I don't have too much heart, heartburn with what my neighbor's doing there, but I have a neighbor even closer that just lets them run in the backyard. All right, so we know, we know the number one cause, you know, it's, it's footwear. So if there's anything we can do, <clears throat> the second thing beyond not associating with backyard, it's designating footwear for the farm. And folks, that really means managing it. 
and I get it. I know when my son has a little late game and I'm in, in the chicken house, I've just had a vent cable snap and I'm trying to put all that back together for the little late game, I know that it's easy to break some of these rules, but those shoes should remain on the farm and they shouldn't leave the farm. Uh, how many of you have been to a country store and you've seen the manure all over the place? We're going to talk about that too. But, but um, I mean, I've pulled up into driveways and where the little uh, places where you, the curbs where you park, I've seen where people have cleaned their boots on that. Well, that's, that's, that's not, you, you don't want to be associated with that. All right. Secondly, no unauthorized visitors. You should know everybody who is coming to your farm. And there should be a reason that they're on, on your farm. So you want control over that. You want to be able to, uh, you know, you, you want to be able to document who's coming and going. Uh, the personal protective equipment, if, if that person that's coming to your farm is having direct contact with your birds, they need to put on footwear, they need to cover up, and they need to put a hairnet on. And that's kind of a minimum thing. And again, you control that. All right, there it is. Our, our model is in the back of the room somewhere. Yeah, there's Kenny back there. <laughs> so anyway, if, if they're coming in contact with your birds, that's what you want. And again, this, this absolutely has to do with everybody who is coming in contact. That includes you know, people that come in to work on a feed line. Uh, again, the key is, is that person in direct contact with living birds? If the answer to that is yes, they need, to, they need to cover up. All right. Approved and well-managed mortality systems. Um, again, very important that mortality is, is taken care of in a proper manner that we don't have a bunch of cats and dogs and buzzards and all kinds of things that are that, that, that are coming on to a coming on to a farm because again they can you know they can move this virus around. Here's a that's a bucket of maggots. I'm, I'm sure at one time there was probably some dead birds in that and now that's just a, a bucket of maggots. You can see this mortality system where uh, the, the black black-headed buzzards, or you can see the see the urates, see the urates running down the, the wood. So again, these are not this is not a desirable. And again, if you have this going on for all intent and purposes, you have no operational biosecurity program. You have none. Okay, a lot of farms are getting bigger. A lot of farms are hiring people. A lot, a lot of people. And it's important that you educate educate your employees. And uh, again, just make them aware you may know all this, but ultimately you're responsible for their behavior. And it's very important that they practice some of these same things. So there it is. There are the biosecurity ap absolutes. And, um, and we do have some handouts. Um, and without it, you do not have a, a plan. So John Moe, you're, you're up. Could you turn the lights on for a minute? I'm actually here to rescue you from Bill so he doesn't keep taking his clothes off. I just want you to know that. We, we, we thought this through. All right, what we're going to do now is just for, we're going to do the clickers. Everybody's got your clicker? We're going to collect some data. And, and if we click this data, we can uh, then turn around and go with that and use it to tell our bosses we're actually working. But it also allows us to see what you know and what you're doing. And in doing that, we can therefore improve how we how we do it. What did you do, Jenny? It's all right. We'll get there. By the way, we did try and get a better model, Kenny. You were our last vote. So, all right. What is the capacity of your farm? Now, if you're an allied industry or government, you're down there at the bottom. But we'd just like to know what the capacity of the farms are. All right. Uh, Bill, where did you get the clicker? Oh, put the lights back on. I got it. So make sure your clicker um, is green when you hit it, and it only takes your last response. So you can right. So if you put the wrong one, you, you put the wrong response, go ahead and correct it. It'll automatically. It'll just keep your last one. 
By the way, we don't know who is responding or what you're saying, so it's all anonymous. All right, you ready? Everybody good? Everybody's good? All right, we'll, we'll move on. Let's see what we have here. I have seven, we got 80. Why is it clicking on? Oh, it's in the other PowerPoint. You're going to have to click go for me, Jenny. All right. Jenny, you're going to have to click it forward. Just hit the down arrow. All right. You see we have a lot of allied industry here today and some government. That was a lot today. All right, next question is, where is your farm located? So, not where you live, but where your farm's located. All right, you good, Jenny? Hit no. <laughs> again, everybody. There we go. I can't see. I guess I could wander over here. All right. Let's see. We actually, you know, we actually had Virginia earlier today. We're really excited about that. All right. What is your gender? Now, if you're not sure, ask the person next to you. It's kind of one of those things. This has gotten a little bit more sketchy lately. So. Anyway, we, we actually don't care. We just have to collect this because USDA does. All right. Uh, oh, they did better on that one. Yeah, you guys did better. It's true. More sure of your answer on that one, I guess, is what it is. All right, next one is ethnicity. Again, we really don't care. We'll talk to anybody, but uh, USDA cares. So that's what's up there. Give everybody a second to respond. What's up? What's up, Do other. Just go with the other, man. It kicks everybody. All right, how did you find out about this meeting? Now, this is one we're curious about because we want to know what's the best way to effectively communicate with y'all. It's kind of fun when I stand here, I can see how many clicks one goes. All right, next one. Let's see what the majority of y'all is email. Okay, that's, that's good. Okay, now we're going to get to the nitty gritty. Do you have dedicated farm footwear? Yes or no? Footwear that you use only on the farm and goes nowhere else. And if you're government employees, do you always wear protective shoes or shoe covers when you go on farms? And you can detect if you're lying. That's right. It'll shock you if you lie. <laughs> if you're in your lab, do you wear protective foot covers? See? Yeah, there you go. You can answer that one. All right. So let's see on this one. Oh, very good. The majority say, all right, just everybody give yourself a round of applause. Give yourself a thousand of that. <laughs> all right, next one. Do you have farm dedicated clothing? Now, when I had birds, I had farm dedicated clothing because my wife wouldn't let me leave the farm. It's that simple. Are you that way too? I see you laughing. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see how we did on that one. Again, this is much better. Hey, can you hold the mic up by your mouth so we can what? hear it? Thank you. All right. Sorry about that, guys. All right. Next question. Do you have contact with backyard poultry? Hopefully not after today. Again, we're doing really well there. All right. The next question is, do you con... Is your composter properly maintained and is it used correctly? There's a lot of laughing on this one. Yeah, this is one your neighbor can't help you with, okay? I'd like this is to one that answer. That's right. All right. Do you require visitors to wear protective clothing? Remember, folks. This is your farm. You are the final say in the biosecurity that happens there. You can require them to wear the biosecurity clothing. Are you doing it? Well, we're really getting slower on these answers, guys. I'll tell you. All right, majority. Okay, now we're going to switch over to uh, back to the talk. Can you turn the lights back on? Turn the lights on, Bill. 
John, make sure it's showing green. Where's the arm? I can't see it. Uh, there'll be a little flash in the